everyone, it's Laura Myers for CMS Connected here at Bloom Reach Connect 2018. And I'm joined by Raj Tadada, the CEO and co-founder of Bloom Reach. Thanks so much for joining us. Nice to see you, Laura. Yeah, and he just came from his wonderful keynote this morning. He talked about so many great things. One of the greatest things, though, is I heard you recently explain this, and I'd like you to do it here, where you have the greatest explanation of the DXP in relation to what we're used to. So explain those main differences. Yeah, no, that's, uh, you know, it's a really confusing topic. Yeah. Because as an industry, we use so much jargon and lingo. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, classically, people have thought about CMS, or sometimes Web Content Management, WCM. Mm -hmm. And the question is, what's the real difference between that, a content management system, and a digital experience platform? Yeah. And in our mind, there's a couple of very significant differences. The first thing is, a content management system, or a Web Content Management system, is a application. Mm -hmm. It is an application that marketers use mm -hmm. for the most part. As an application, what do you do with it? Yeah. You go in, you launch a website, you publish content, you manage content, you know, and then you ultimately make sure that that website stays up and running. Mm -hmm. And so that's what a content management system or a web content management system does. Yeah. A digital experience platform is a platform. It's mm -hmm. not an application. And so the first big difference is application versus platform. And in, in being a platform, it does all the things that a CMS does. So it's not a different thing. It includes a CMS, mm -hmm. number one. But in being a platform, you can actually build on it. Yeah. And so whereas a web content management system is typically an application that I use, a DXP, or a digital experience platform, consists of a set of APIs, and I can actually build interesting business logic, plug in other components, add interesting machine learning capabilities all on top. So that's yeah. the first first major difference is application versus mm -hmm. the Second, The second difference is web content management includes the word content. Mm -hmm. So when we think about content, content typically means web pages, articles, images, videos, basically content. A digital experience platform has the word experience. And yeah. being an experience, it's much more than content. Mm -hmm. It includes not just the content, but the search box. It includes the analytics that I think about in terms of how I determine what content should be on the site. Mm -hmm. It includes the navigation menus. It includes personalizing the experience. So much more than content includes the whole experience. And the final difference is, remember it's web content management mm -hmm. over here. And so web content management is about the website. Whereas a digital experience platform goes much beyond the website. Yeah. It includes the apps, it includes IoT, it includes chatbots, it includes really any customer touch point. Mm -hmm. So that's what we see as the real contrast is apps versus platform, content versus experience, yeah. and uh, Web. website versus all content. Yeah, perfect. One of the other things that I noticed being at this event is the community has a very futuristic feel, and you explained it in your keynote having to do with the experience era. So explain a little bit of what that means. You know, the experience era is the era where our entire business gets put online and manifested in a customer experience. Mm -hmm. So we used to think of digital yeah. websites as, hey, it's marketing what we're doing on offline. Yeah. But in the experience era, the whole business is online. Mm -hmm. And the whole experience is manifested in a digital experience. Yeah. Whether it's the examples of your experience walking into a soccer stadium, or as our guest earlier talked about, your experience with diabetes treatment. Yeah. or your experience with life insurance, the purchase and the use of it over time, mm -hmm. or, or buying a pair of shoes and then thinking about what, what pair I want down the street. Yeah. All of those are end-to-end -end experiences, and it's about putting the entire business online, mm -hmm. not just marketing our assets. Mm -hmm. Yeah. One of the other things I love is you addressed, you know, the, the boogie net in this case in terms of commerce, which is Amazon, and everybody kind of has these conversations, but how do you suggest businesses attempt to compete with Amazon? Well, I think first, you gotta, you gotta Amazonify your own business yeah. to get started. That's the table stakes. Mm -hmm. And by that, what we mean is, what is what have been the core attributes that have made Amazon great from a technology perspective? Mm -hmm. It's been use of APIs and microservices. It's been use of machine learning and AI. It's been use of personalization technology. And so, we built the BlueRidge platform and the DXP to sort of level the playing field. So yeah. you don't have to go do all those things and hire 25,000 engineers. Yeah. You start with a basic platform that gets you the basics. Mm -hmm. And then on top of that, what the reason the DXP is so important is you then innovate on top of that. Mm -hmm. We just talked about how the digital experience is the centerpiece of your business. Well, you're not going to compete with Amazon by doing what Amazon does. Yeah. You're going to compete with Amazon by putting your unique brand, your unique offerings, your unique customer experience 
forward, mm -hmm. and the DXP is there to accelerate in a high velocity way mm -hmm. your ability to do so. And so that's step two is put your best foot forward and really make sure you compete on your own terms, not yeah. on their terms. Yeah, absolutely. Well, that's all the questions I have. Thanks so much. Awesome. Thanks, Laura. Perfect.